Hello welcome. and welcome. Nope. All right, try it again. Three, two, one. Give me a moment's peace and take out that trash. We pay taxes for people to come and take the garbage. Hey, listen, Greeny, no more sneaking rides to the junkyard. Yeah, man, take a taxi when you want to go to the junkyard. Welcome, welcome to, to Hot Trash, Trash Unlimited, Unlimited, the, the show, show where me, Caleb, Joe, and Joe, Caleb, stay inside our home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, we watch movies that we think possibly are going to be hot trash, enjoyably bad, and we're always wrong. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Joe, what did we watch this week? Well, this week on the COVID sessions, we watched Scoob! Exclamation point. Gentlemen, welcome aboard. Are you the- this isn't about some guy in a rubber mask. I would have gotten away with this if it weren't for you meddling. This is about one of us. Welcome to the Falcon Fury. Oh, Falcon. A reimagining of the lovely Scooby Doo. So I would say neither of us are really pushing for many things these days. We just like, we should watch this. And because we don't actually have to drive anywhere, we're like, sure. Yeah. But I would say if one of us was pushing this, you would be the one who was pushing it for us to watch Scoob. Can you explain to me why you made me do this? I don't know if I was pushing to watch Scoob. It's more so, oh, wait, this finally came out. I remember seeing endless ads for this in the theater. But I would say you're more of a more of a Scooby-Doo fan. Oh, yeah, I love Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo is a constant in my life. I, like, I watched some old Scooby-Doo as a kid. My most strong memory is during one of the Super Bowls, watching... <laughs> In someone's closet, which they had retrofitted into like a mini living room, watching the one where they go and find the Loch Ness monster. The one of the movies or one of the like, yeah, it was one of the movies. Um, but then my uh, my primary exposure was I had a comic book of a bunch of Scooby Doo stories. Interesting. It was it like translates very well to like single issue stories. I think my ranking of Scooby Doo uh, media is. What's new Scooby-Doo? Like the 2000s revival. That was some solid Scooby-Doo action. Mr. Inc. That's another solid 2010s revival. And then uh, the like 90s directed DVD movies where it was like the official comeback. I don't want to show our hand too much here, but ne- neither of us like this. No. Um, we were checked out pretty quickly. But what do you think makes those revivals work and th- this revival not work. The thing about Scooby Doo, you said it. You said it very perfectly. Is you don't change anything. Everybody has the same personalities. You don't make anyone uh, too different from what they were in the '60s when it came out. You just slightly modern setting. That's a, really that's all you need to do. Slightly modern updates to everything. You don't need to put in a bunch of references or anything. It's just it's a format that works. Mm-hmm. And I think each generation that show is made with like two. Like the original show is made on a budget of like two cents an episode. Yeah, and it worked. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like the personalities, all that stuff, the visuals, that stuff's fine. The base designs have stuck around, and like it's charming to go back to them. But what you can't do is try to subvert it because everything Scooby Doo tries to subvert it. And so if everything is constantly trying to be subversive, then there is no base. If everyone's subversive, no one will be. And I think that's the main thing is this isn't really a Scooby-Doo movie. No, no, no. It's a superhero movie. It's like an animated kid superhero movie, but no one knows who the superhero is. It, It begins with just one of the most confusing things. Simon Cowell is in this movie. Now, we recently watched Shrek I have now two. seen two movies this week with a Simon Cowell animated cameo. Although, he's he's upgraded because in Shrek 2, he was just a cameo on the DVD bonus. Uh-huh. Now he's in the theatrical cut. But somehow, he doesn't look too much better in this animated movie, which came out... How long has it been since Shrek 2? 16 yeah. years. Somehow, it hasn't improved. <laughs> it's It's terrifying. I don't get it. Like I get when the Harlem Globe Globetrotters are in a Scooby Doo thing. Mm-hmm. I get when Kiss is in a Scooby Doo thing because mm-hmm. it's all kind of like the same level of chic. Yeah, I don't get while Simon Cowell and Ira Glass, because <laughs> Ira Glass is also in this <laughs> for a brief second. And he's like he's not even doing the This American Life thing. He's doing like a horoscope. Scooby Doo itself is not above celebrity cameos, like. The no. show has thrived off that for years. Yeah, but why these celebrities? I don't know. Why Why a NPR a host 
and Simon Cowell. I don't know. But so Simon Cowell breaks up the gang. Because movies are always fun where the uh, chemistry between characters is not in the movie for 90% of it. Well, you know, it is a very common thing in sequels to break up the team because then you can get them in smaller groups. Uh, Empire Strikes Back does this. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 recently did this. But this is the first movie. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But is it? That's the other thing I was thinking of. It's like, do we need time to have all the staples of Scooby-Doo when we also all know them? When you have, yay, chemistry between the gang that is great and has served the test of time and Blue Falcon and Dino Mutt, which has not served the test of time. I think there's a clear option of the one you should go with. Do you know the last person to voice the Blue Falcon? No. Adam West. <laughs> the voice him in one of the, one of the directed DVD movies. Oh, man. It's not good, but it's so much better than Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to go do this, and I'm Blue Falcon. Yeah. I don't hate Mark Wahlberg. I just... It's the, it's the quintessential high-pitched Mark Wahlberg performance where he... I'm questioning everything that's going on, and I have a very high voice. Where are my balloons, Didi? When I say Falcon Fury, that's supposed to cue the balloons. It's also... Why... <laughs> Why Mark Wahlberg? Because it they didn't advertise it as no. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, so it's not like the DreamWorks thing where you're going to throw up all these names that parents will recognize. Mm-hmm. So like, why even throw in Mark Wahlberg? Because they're obviously going for names, but I'd also say that like Zac Efron, Amanda Seyfried, they're not great. I'd rather have real voice actors here, Mm -hmm. but they're not dragging down the film. I think Mark Wahlberg is actively (laughs) dragging down the film. I think so, too. I think that character and the performance are actively dragging it down. Yeah, and this isn't even the Blue Falcon. This is another subversion. Yeah. (laughs) But you can't subvert the Blue Falcon because no No one one knows knows who he is. (laughs) They're trying to set up this Hanna-Barbera verse. Top three that I can name. Scooby-Doo, obviously, like the biggest name. Flintstones, I think, would be the second. And then like Yogi Bear or something. Maybe is Jetson Justin's his hand Jetsons, barbear. Yeah. Okay. I don't care or know who anyone else is after that. I, there was some that you recognize. Like I know who Dick Dastardly is. Yeah, there's the there's the cat who's pink. Not Pink Panther. <laughs> Don't but know who you're talking about. I also about. think Pink Panther is a Hanna-Barbera character, too. The point is, they're recognizable characters, but Blue Falcon and Captain Caveman are not among them. Or Dee Dee Sky. Is that who yeah, she, she was, was? She was one of the throwaway, we're going to have a billion shows about teenagers doing stuff. Oh, man. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre that like they have enough faith in all this ancillary stuff, but they don't have a faith in just doing a Scooby-Doo movie. Like every six months, there's a new Scooby-Doo video or straight to DVD thing where it's like, okay, this clearly works because they're still coming out. People are watching them. But that, now we have a straight to DVD quality thing that was supposed to be a theatrical release that is now straight to streaming. I think if you actually look at like the numbers, they probably put a lot more money into this than the straight to DVDs, but it doesn't look better. No. And I, and I think I know the reason. Because it's like just cheap 3D animation. Exactly. Instead of cheap 2D, 2D animation, animation. Where you can hide a lot more cheap 2D animation. Yeah, and just we're used to that because that's what's normal for Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Why? I really wonder if it's going to look bad either way. I get that they kind of want to differentiate it. But make good 2D animation. No, then people won't see it. The 2D animation doesn't do well in theaters. But don't you I think, mean, no one was going to see this anyways. Yeah, Let's be but, real. But if something was, don't you think it would be an IP that is like traditionally 2D? I mean, yeah, that would make sense. I just But th- they made this movie. Clearly, they weren't thinking. All these people look like blobs. They yeah. look like they're about to melt because they have no bone structure. <laughs> They don't do anything that's eye-catching with whatever art style they decided to use. It's not, the most not. bland animation. But also, I want to see how much money got spent on this. But also, the designs of the characters swing drastically because they're trying to bring all these people in. Captain Caveman doesn't look like Dick Dastardly, who doesn't look like <laughs> Simon Cowell, everyone's favorite Hanna Barbera character. <laughs> Hanna Barbera character. <laughs> Should we talk about the biggest tragedy of this movie, The Waste of Jason Isaacs? Who is doing his darndest to try to give such a good performance. I mean, yeah, it's it's Jason Isaacs. And being one of the only like true voice actors of the cast really sticks out. But I'm like, I, it makes me sad every time Dick Dastardly is on screen. Also, Dick Dastardly is not that bad. Like, yes, he does bad things. But like, no one needs that gold. Why shouldn't he go after it? He gets to rebuild the Acropolis. Do you know how <laughs> how much I would I would give him all that gold 
for the chance for a bunch of scholars to be able to study the Acropolis. And when you get down to it, it's like he could just go up to Scooby and be like, yo, can you help me get my dog, dog out back? of here? Yeah. Obviously, kidnapping is wrong. Obviously. I, I feel like me saying it that way has made it sound like I am kidnapping people. <laughs> I'm not, <laughs> but his methodology is wrong, but I don't think like his end goal is mainly. I just want him to rebuild the Acropolis so we can study it. Also, the plot swings wildly where there is no end goal at the beginning. We, we just, it keeps being okay. Got to stop the three skulls. Oh wait, the three skulls, what are they for? They're opening hell. Well, also in a story, you need to establish status quo and then complicate it. Something changes. The status there quo. is no status quo here. Right? No, immediately the blue falcon the blue falcon kidnaps them. Yeah, immediately they break up. The band breaks up. It's the same problem with the two thousands movie. Yeah. That except happens I, at the very beginning. Except I have nostalgia for the two thousands movie. Oh, it's almost gotta smash everything we can into this movie that runs at a breakneck pace. But it's it also so, so slow and long. It's an hour and a half. I want to let want to let me uh, in you on a little secret. I had a feeling I wasn't gonna enjoy this. I set that to one point two five speed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I am so usually I don't want anything to taint my viewing experience of a cinematic uh cinematic film, but we're not in a cinema, we're in our no. house and we have better things to do with our time. So is this What's the what's even the point? What's even the point of doing this ranking system anymore? This was It's fun. only ever mediocrity. It's, uh, we did have satanic panic. Yes, that's true. It's it's only ever just like boring mediocrity that I'm not going to remember came out. Why do a superhero movie if it's just going to get buried in all the other superhero movies? You have a chance with an IP that is known for mysteries. Make a mystery. We genuinely love watching movies that are terrible. This is why we started the podcast. Uh -huh. But what this podcast has done is made me realize how rare of gems those are. This is a punishing experience. <laughs> Scoob is making me have a, a creative existential crisis. Caleb, I want the movies to open back up to where I can like possibly avoid this awful stuff because it's like, Oh, there's a trip involved in that. I don't know if I want to waste three hours of my life. Well, and you know, there's new movies coming out each week. So we wouldn't have seen Scoob. Like, I'm pretty sure we had that conversation in the theater. Where it was going to get buried this? in like yeah. everything else coming out. It was just one of those things that we were going to miss. Yeah. But we can't do that. now. <laughs> Although we could, we could watch Capone. <laughs> this isn't going to kill Scooby-Doo. Do you think anything could kill that franchise, though? More of these movies. I mean, have you seen the directed DVD stuff? They're all pretty bad. Not recently, but like it's just run of the mill Scooby Doo. There isn't dabbing in them, to my knowledge. It's just there isn't just out of touch jokes. Do you think it's because Scooby Doo like operates at such this level of mediocrity? Yeah, that, like it's not the greatest thing so in the world, it but it's just amusing killed. enough. It's immortal, is what you're telling me. <laughs> It's lasted this long, man. The last thing before the heat death of the universe will be a new Scooby-Doo movie. <laughs> it's still, it's going to be the apocalypse, like Fallout style. But there's st every six months, there's still a new straight to DVD. There's someone the just currency. animating away in a basement. That's the currency <laughs> straight to DVD. Frank movies. Welker's immortal soul is going to be like in a brain still, or like a brain in a jar still voice acting. Here, I'll give you these food rations for <laughs> Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. <laughs> I got three copies of Scooby-Doo Cyber Chase for you. <laughs> <laughs>